Heinz Felbrich spends most of his time these days sitting at home at Eastley near Southampton, enjoying a well-earned retirement. He's 87 now, and because that's sometimes the way of things when you pass 80, it's the moments of his youth that are often most clear in his mind. The years, for instance, when he was an Unteroffizier in a crack unit of the German army. The years when he and thousands of others like him swept through Europe on a tide of German victories. Over 10,000 troops were landed in this manner before the stunned citizens of Rotterdam even knew they were at war. And the months when he and countless others nearly froze to death as the Germans strove and failed to capture Moscow. Today, as on most days, Heinz waits for his wife June to come home from the shops and from bingo. There'll be a cup of tea waiting for her. Hello, darling, I'm home. All right. Did you win? No, don't oh, be silly. Right. June and Heinz have been married 60 years. Ruby won and Peggy won, but I didn't win. I can't get much luck, can I? No. You're lucky to have me. And when they married in August 1947, they defied convention and the hostility of their neighbours to do so. For Heinz was a German prisoner of war, and June was the first British girl to marry a German POW. When I was walking out with him in his German prisoner of war uniform in the daylight, they used to be rude and say, aren't our boys good enough for you? They'd spit on me. Kick, spit on you? Kick me, you punch me. But I... I just ignored them and went on walking. The prisoner of war camp was at Southampton near the airport. Heinz had been captured in 1944 by the Americans near the River Rhine in Germany. Oh, they put us on trucks and shipped us over to England. What was the camp like in Southampton? Oh, it was lovely, lovely camp. It was a Yankee camp. There was everything for them. There was lovely mattresses and all that sort of thing. It was lovely. Camp. What sort of jobs did you do, Heinz? I was a lorry driver. They got a penny an hour to work. They built roads and put up prefabs and they had to make good a lot of the German bombings that had, that had been done. Heinz's father, Johann, had also fought against the British in France in the First World War. But in victory in 1919, the Allies had also sowed the seeds of discontent that would lead to World War II only 20 years later. Well, they took parts of it away from Germany, and that's what started the Second World War, because Nazi Hitler, he wanted it all back. Heinz was brought up amid the devastation of a defeated Germany, with inflation rampant and morale and public services shattered. But from 1933, Hitler and his National Socialists had offered the Germans hope and a new discipline. They'd done a lot for the poor people there. Family allowance come in and all this, and uh, everybody had work. You wanted everybody to work hard and be the same. Uniformity was the aim, and Heinz joined the Hitler Youth, as did a whole generation of young Germans. They started us off to be big people, soldiers and, you know. When did you become a soldier? 1940, 16, I think I was. I was mostly dispatch rider. Took papers from one airport to another. In 1940, the Wehrmacht swept the Allied armies out of mainland Europe. France, Belgium and Holland surrendered. Heinz became part of the German forces occupying Holland. You must have thought, really, that you were winning the war then. Oh, we were. We were. But in June 1941, Hitler invaded Russia, and all that came to an end. What was that like? Horrible. We flew and landed on the lake on ice. Skidded along. Skidded along, yeah. So you came in, uh, in a glider, did you? Yeah. He said it was minus 50 degrees there, and... A lot of the men lost their feet and hands and nose and stuff. Frostbite? Yeah. They lost legs, everything, you know, the frost was over 50 degrees. And you weren't ready for that? No. Nor dressed no, for it? No, not dressed for it. No. How did you survive? Well, we had to. 
You have to survive. You have to keep going and going and going. Keep yourself warm. You were wounded, I think, in yes, Russia. Yes, I was. One of our company trod on a mine. So I went to get them out of there. And bugger me, I stopped up another one. And that's my, my injuries here. And I went back. They x-rayed it and I said, you, your foot is like bone salad. Bone salad? Yeah. Did you rescue your comrade? Yeah. Did he survive? I don't know. I've never seen him no more. Never seen him no more. I think you got a medal for that. Yeah, the Iron Cross and a helmet. That's for injuries, you know. Does the wound still give him trouble? Yes, very much so. He got a job to walk on it. And he was in hospital for 12 months before he was sent back to Germany. Did he, at that time, know what had happened to his family in the war? No, no, he didn't know where they were. Heinz had six brothers and two sisters. His father was once again a soldier fighting his second war against the British. He was killed. I've only seen him once. I was on holiday then. From there on, never seen him, see him again. Heinz's brother, Franz, was in New On the big farm, he was blacksmith. Mm. Only two the horses. And he didn't have to go, but he wanted to go. And he went to Stalingrad. Never heard no more from him. Ernst, and hundreds of thousands like him, died at Stalingrad. Then the Luftwaffe battered the great port towns of Southampton. Meanwhile, life was by no means easy for June Tull and her family living at number 33 Langhorne Road, Southampton. June's father drove a tram. It was very hard. The kids had an outing once a year, that's all, with the trams. And that's the only time we ever went to the seaside when I was a child. My mother in the summer used to give us a bottle of water and some jam sandwiches and we used to go down the river all day and we thought we was in heaven. In September 1939, I was evacuated to Bournemouth because that was an open city. But they didn't bomb it, you mean? No. Two of the boys went to... Um, Dorset, on a farm there. Did Mum stay? She stayed in Southampton the whole time, yes, during the war. They slept down the air raid shelter every night. But by 1944, the war was going badly for Germany. When the Russians began to push forward into Germany, yeah. what happened to your family? Mother, she took them. Dad. Two horses and a cart and everything went on there. They walked for three months from the East Zone to near Hamburg, where they live now, with a horse and cart. And Heinz never knew where they were. Why did they want to flee from the Russians? Well, they didn't want to stay there, and the Russians. I mean, they, they had revenge for what we done to them, you know? The fear was that the women would be raped yeah, and, yeah, and that the men would yeah, be killed. Yeah. Fit again, though walking with a limp, Heinz was pressed back into the army. The Wehrmacht were now in full retreat. I wanted to get across the Rhine. To retreat? We tried to make floats, but it was too dangerous. So in the end, we had enough and said, let's go to, back to towards the Yanks. So we buried all our, our weapons in the, in the woods. The gangs was there. They, they just come on with, with, with their guns and, you know, hands up, pinch everything what you are. Like what? Watches, especially watches. How did they treat you? The order was quite good. They pinched everything, but otherwise it was good too. June Tull had left Southampton as an evacuee when she was nine years old. And when you came back? I was 15. Did you have boyfriends before you met uh, Heinz? Yes, yes. Anyone you were particularly fond of? Yes, one. What happened to him? I gave him up after I met Heinz. Just like that? Yeah. 
When did you first see Himes then? There was snow on the ground and the lake at the common was frozen and we went skating on the lake on the Sunday afternoon with Amy and, and uh, Eric, my friend, and her German friend. So Amy was already going out with a prisoner of war? Yes, war. yes. Can you remember what you said when you first saw Heinz? I said, oh, he's gorgeous. I fancy him. Why was that? Was he handsome? Oh, very. Really tight, black, curly hair. Did you think anyone would be upset if you went out with him? I don't think I took it into consideration, actually. Didn't matter to you? No, I was young and stupid. Or, quite simply, head over heels in love. At the end of World War II, tens of thousands of captured German prisoners of war were imprisoned in the UK, among them Heinz Felbrisch. They became the object of some interest to two Southampton girls, June Tull and her best friend, Amy. We were outside the camp on the road and they were inside the barbed wire. And we stood there with our bikes talking to them over the barbed wire. And what did you think of June the first time you met her? Well, she looked a nice girl. So I, I fancied her. We couldn't speak much English when I first met him. And how was your German? None existed. <laughs> <laughs> So how did you manage to communicate? Did you teach him in your Feet and hands. The prisoners had a curfew. They had to be back in camp by eight o'clock, which made things difficult for Heinz and June. He used to get out there, didn't he, when he shouldn't be? Yes. How did he manage that? He used to go, go out at nights and under the barbed wire. They made a ditch underneath it to get out in. And he used to crawl back in there in the mornings before roll call. So how long had you been going out with him, really, before you decided you'd better tell your mother? A couple of months, I suppose. I said I wanted to bring him home one night. So she said, I'll bring him Sunday for dinner. And he came to Sunday dinner with the family. She liked me, yeah. I used to go down there every Monday to the Russian. I bet she was pleased about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She was fine at the time. At the time? At the time, yeah. Did things change? Yes, later. Eventually, a worried June told her mother that she was pregnant. I wanted to get married, and she was worried what her family and neighbours would say, because they were still very prejudiced then. She said, you please yourself, June, but she said, Heinz will get fed up with being here. You'll want to go home after a few months. You must have been worried sick. I was out of my mind. I didn't know what to do. Because, of course, you hate telling your parents. How old were you? I was 18, I think. 19 when we got married, yes. Were you afraid that you might lose him? Not in my heart, I wasn't, no. I knew he wouldn't go and leave me. He was very sincere. And yet you gave him a photograph? Hmm. Can you remember what you, you Never said? Never forget me. That was in case the Commandant sent him back home, because I had to go to the Commandant of the camp to get permission to marry him. What was that like? Frighten him. How did you explain the predicament that you were in? I just told him the truth. And he said? He heard it the day before that the Prime Minister announced that English girls could marry German prisoners of war, so it would be OK. That must have been a weight off your mind. I, it definitely was. And the next day I was down the registry office <laughs> arranging the wedding for three weeks' time. Heinz and June were married at Southampton Civic Centre on August the 14th, 1947. And most of the prisoners of war came that wanted to. And the prisoner of war band played at our wedding as well. What sort of band was that? Oh, sort of a German umpire band. Very good, happy music. Oh, it's lovely. Everybody, the old camp, did done everything for us. And Amy and I stayed up all night doing the reception ourselves. What did you have? Oh, sausage rolls and the normal things, you know, sandwiches and stuff. 
We couldn't get a lot because things were still on ration then. Did you have a wedding cake? Yes, we did, actually. Amy bought that for me as my wedding present. And she also bought my wedding ring. Because Heinz had... He had no money at all. They got a penny an hour, but that was used up soon on toiletries and stuff, yeah. So what about the wedding night? The wedding night? There was no wedding night. We had the reception until 10 o'clock, and then the prisoners of war all had to be in camp by then. They took me back to the camp and soon had to go home. That wasn't very good, was it? No, it wasn't very good. Altogether, though, a happy day. But in the next few weeks, those who knew June, and many who didn't, made their feelings about the wedding very clear. I had a load of hate mail, two big black sackfuls of it, and I took it to the police and asked them what I should do about it. And he said, just burn it and forget it. And did you? Yes, yes. Did you get any letters that supported you and wished you well? I got one, and that was from a couple in Chandler's Ford. What did they say? You can't help who you fall in love with, so we wish you all the best, and it was beautiful. How long did it take your mother to realise that this was you and Heinz for life? I don't really think she did, actually. That must be a regret for you. Not really, I didn't care. I was happy and I was in love and I didn't care. All that was 60 years ago, and given the usual ups and downs, Heinz and June have had a happy marriage. Heinz earned his living on the land and travelled all over the country. I worked on a farm milking the cows, getting up at four o'clock in the morning. He was erecting Dutch barns on farms and he went all over the country, in Scotland, Wales, everywhere. Was he good at his job? Very much so. He was a supervisor. He worked away for two or three weeks at a time. But it was lovely when he came home. It was like a honeymoon each time. <laughs> They've raised six children, Peter, Keith and Paul, John, Angela and Anita. Heinz has raced pigeons in his spare time. Peter started it, my oldest son. When he was at school, he had pigeons. I used to take him to school up my jumper and let him go, and they'd be at home when I got there. I had pigeons when, at home when I was a youngster. What is it about pigeons? A mystery. Nobody knows how they do it. They were very good flyers. A pair of them, they got loads of cups and trophies here. Just occasionally, the hostility Heinz and June had felt when they married was also experienced by their family. Children used to hate us. I got beat up about three or four times, I think, just by, you know, older kids at school. Why? Because they hated the Germans, the war. I got dug into an air raid shelter and they just beat me up. So bad, but you survive, you get stronger. Did you have a similar experience? No, I didn't, but then there's ten years between my brother Peter and I, and I think things move on, and perhaps people were more forgiving ten years down the line than they were directly after the war. They did just take the mickey out of our name, they just changed it to just not swear words, but stupid things they used to say. Like but what? then they did, they'd, well they used to call me felt prick and things like that, but they would um, so they would do that with other kids as well, with other names. Did you ever wish that your name wasn't Felbridge? Um, I don't think so, no. It's just what you're born with, isn't it? We're all proud of our name. I don't think he ever thought about changing his name, but to his friends he was called Harry. It wasn't an attempt to hide his name, it was an affectionate name, and or he would be called H for some reason. Your dad had a distinguished war record. Did he ever talk to you about it? He's told us bits and pieces over the years. He got injured saving one of his friends, which is the thing that he would do. It must have been hell. I can't imagine how desperate they were. Mum said that he would wake up in the middle of the night screaming and it was obviously nightmares to do with the war. So knowing that as a young child, it's not something that you keep broaching your dad about to relive memories that you don't want to relive. He's a gentle loving father and husband and it seems like another person to me. It doesn't seem like my father, a German paratrooper. The Felbridges celebrated their diamond wedding in the same year as Queen Elizabeth and her husband Prince Philip. The couples exchanged congratulations. And the Felbridges, Heinz and June, had a double celebration in England 
and later in Germany when, as a surprise, all their children flew out to join the party. We were just sat down to have a meal and then all my six children walked in. I was absolutely flabbergasted. It was a bit nervous actually because not knowing how Mum was going to react because we weren't supposed to be there. I'm not normally stuck for words, but I, I just couldn't speak. It was wonderful. I've never seen my mother speechless and she was like a goldfish <laughs> and nothing came out, just nothing. But her jaw kept moving and nothing happened. That made that day so special. It was really lovely. To me, they've always been a happily married couple. They come as a pair, they're a job lot. They don't come as two separate entities to me. I can only imagine what they went through, the hatred that people felt towards German people. It must have been a very difficult time. People had lost sons and husbands. You can understand why people were angry. Being half English and half German, I think it's made me tolerant and maybe more forgiven than perhaps other people might be. There's always two sides to a story and all we've ever really been taught in the history of the World Wars is one side of the story. There would have been people over in Germany suffering the same as we were suffering. When you ever watch a war film, it's all, you know, Germans are the bad people, but they're really just doing as they're told as we were. So just, you know, tell people there's two sides to a story. 